This video is about binary search trees. Binary search trees are a special type of binary trees. And a binary tree, in turn, is uh, either empty or contains some data together with two subtrees. A binary search tree, however, needs to obey an extra property and that is all the data in the left subtree should be strictly less than the data in the root which in turn should be strictly less than all the data in the right subtree. Here the function f is a helper function that takes as the first two arguments a minimum bound, an, an, a lower bound, and the second argument an upper bound. Okay, the typical operations on uh, binary search trees are uh, adding an element, checking for membership, and removing an element. Here X stands for one uh, data element and X stands for a set. Now to add an element X to a set, I'm gonna pattern match on a few cases depending on what uh, the set already contains. So the set could be empty. or it could branch. In the first case, it's clear what to do. We return the representation of a set with one element. In the second case, in order to maintain the invariant stated earlier, we need to further distinguish three other cases depending on whether x, the element we try to add, is smaller, equal or greater than y, the element that is already at the root. When x is different from y, we just recurse. So I need to make the function recursive. Otherwise, if x is equal to y, that means that the element is already in the set, so there's nothing to do. To check for membership, we need to distinguish basically the same cases. If we bumped into an empty set, then x is not there. 
in these two cases just as before we recurse we search in the left subtree or in the right subtree and the last case corresponds to the situation where x equals y so it is in the set some of these variables are not needed I wrote a lot of code, so let's test a little bit. Okay, let's make a um, set out of a list by repeated application of add. see that the repeated element 2 appears only once and we also see that the numbers appear stri in strictly increasing order 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. Let's check for membership. Two is a member of this set. is not a member of this set. Okay, seems to work. So now let's go back to deletion. For deletion again we do something very similar. And distinguish the same four cases. The set is empty, there's nothing to do. If you remove an element from the empty set, the set remains empty. Now this last branch is reached on x equals y, so I don't really need to name this variable. And we need to remove x. The problem is that we are left with two trees, l and r, and we need to return 1. So it's not completely clear what to do. We can get around it like this. Suppose we divide further into one subcase where it happens that the right subtree is empty. Do we know what to do then? Yes, we do. We just return the left subtree. And in other situations, it's possible to reduce the case to the one above. So in other situations, we found the element we want to remove somewhere in the middle of the tree, but we only know how to deal with it if uh, the element is somewhere at the bottom of the tree, more precisely where it does not have a right branch. So what we're going to do is going to change a little bit the tree such that we push down the element that we want to remove and then repeat, uh, we, we try again to remove x from it. So what do I mean by this pushing down? This pushing down is an operation usually called rotation and the simplest way to explain what it does is to just implement it because um, it's very easy to see the pattern of what's going on. So I'm going to do what's called the left, left rotation. Which takes a tree that looks 
like this and produces a tree that looks like this so one that branches to the right gets transformed in one that branches on the left now I'm gonna put some variable names inside here and I will append a number that says what is their order in this tree so I have a tree here which is the first one some data then another tree tree then some other data and the last tree and then they come here in exactly the same order ok, there is one more parenthesis first tree second data third tree fourth data last tree so you see that the invariant is uh, preserved because things coming from left to right are in the same order in other cases we are not supposed to apply rotation and now let's try to test this line 28 oh. ok let's redefine the set and now let's try to delete something from it let's say that we want to delete uh, number 2 which you see uh, is here and the right subtree is not empty so it will need to apply also rotation So we started with 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8 and we ended up with, with 1, 3, 4, 7, 8. So the removal worked. Okay, so that's binary search trees. Um, when should you use it? Well, you should binary search trees when you need persistency you see that here when we add something to a set the old one doesn't disappear so we can just add say 10 to the set x's now we have the set x's and the set y's that are somewhat similar and they will be sharing memory a lot of memory for this representation the second situation where you should use uh, binary search trees for representing uh, sets is when the problem you're trying to solve somehow involves the order of the data, the total order on the data. So, for example, if you're talking about, um, uh, say, uh, sets of intervals and you want to see which intervals contain a certain point, then that would involve order because the, the way you define that, that the point is inside an interval is by uh, saying one number is bigger than another number so if you want to have a set of intervals then maybe you should consider a uh, binary search tree um, some problems are that uh, it's not as fast as a hash table it uses a little bit more memory because of these pointers to subtrees uh, and of course the biggest problem with the implementation we have here is that uh, the trees are not balanced what does, what does that mean? well it means that if I try to construct a tree out of a sorted list for example what I get back is something that looks very much like uh, the list itself this tree is always branching towards the left so it's a very tall and skinny tree which is not good because then if I'm gonna try to ask for example if 9 is in this set or sorry if uh, 1 is in this set then it will always go down all these 9 levels to find 1 and if I have a sequence of operations is 1 there is 1 there is 1 there is gonna be really slow so there has to be 
on top of what I said, what I implemented here, there has to be some mechanism for balancing the tree. But that, this I will put in a, a subsequent video. That's it.